right, well, uh, we can go ahead and get started. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight for um, our communication panel um, with Susquehanna University. Um, we will be use, utilizing the live chat feature. So if you have a specific question you would like answered tonight, um, or you would like one of the panelists to just elaborate on what they're talking about, feel free to use the chat feature. Um, Rachel will sort of be keeping an eye on that and making sure those questions get answered for us. Uh, my name is Caitlin Wolf. I'm an admissions counselor here at Susquehanna. So I'm really just talking to juniors and seniors in high school about um, their college search, their career goals, and things of that nature, um, as well as helping students with the application process. Um, so I'll just sort of be serving in that role tonight if anybody does have a specific question about application materials or application requirements. I would be happy to answer that for you all. Um, but other than that, I'm going to let our wonderful communication panel sort of take it away. So I will hand it over to Dr. Stark who can introduce himself and then he can have our other panelists introduce themselves as well. All right, thank you, Caitlin. I uh, appreciate it. Hi everybody. Um, and thanks for joining us on your Thursday night, taking time out of your schedule and everything to, to learn more about us and what we do here at SU in the communications department. Um, I'm Dr. Craig Stark. I'm chair of the Department of Communications and associate professor in the department as well. I teach uh, courses in media law, intercultural communication and interpersonal communication. And I've been here since 2006 and it's an awesome place to work. And that's really cool. And one of the reasons it's awesome is because of the students, but then also the people I work with as well. And um, I think the game plan for tonight pretty much is I have a bit of a, a, a PowerPoint to show you that takes, takes maybe 10 to 15 minutes to talk about our program overall. But before I get into that, I want to introduce everybody else on the uh, Zoom session for now. So joining me tonight is my colleague, Dr. Kate Hastings, who teaches in the areas of journalism, and she can tell you more about herself in a few minutes. Uh, Bodhi Shalas is joining us also. He's a sophomore broadcasting major, and he can tell you about him and a few, himself in a few minutes. Amanda Lemire is a junior public relations and advertising major, same thing, she can tell you too. And Rachel Cataldo is a senior sports media major. And I'll give time for everybody to talk here in a few minutes, I promise. Um, one thing I wanna mention also is that if you get any questions during my talking or anybody else's talking, uh, the game plan is to kind of just talk about the program for the first half hour or so. And then if you have questions, feel free to drop them into the chat area for right now and Rachel We'll kind of take charge of that and uh, we'll talk and have hopefully in the second half hour have a uh, bit of a question and answer session to go from there. So what I want to do is um, start off and tell you about us. So bear with me. I'm going to do the share screen thing. We'll see how this goes. But I want to start off real fast with a quick PowerPoint and hopefully you can see this and kind of go from there. So let's do the beginning thing. This is the beginning thing. This is the Department of Communications. So again, if you have any questions at any time, feel free to put them in the chat. So what do we do here at the Department of Communications in Susquehanna? Let's start off with the academic programs to begin with. We offer five tracks, emphases, kind of the same thing, but five areas of study uh, ranging from advertising and public relations to broadcasting to communication studies, journalism and digital content and sports media. And of these five areas, four of them are tied into more industrial sort of professional goals and, and purposes. The communication studies track is built on problem, primarily getting people ready and preparing for graduate school or graduate work after college. So what we try to do is have four out of five of these tracks. And just because you might be in one track or emphasis or area doesn't necessarily mean that that's it. They're gonna be siloed or anything like that. There's a lot of crossover going on here that the students can tell you about in a few minutes, I'm sure. But it's very possible to be involved in sports media and broadcasting or digital content and journalism, for instance. Uh, same thing with communication studies and advertising and public relations. So one of the things we try to do in the department here is to give students a little bit of, well, as much flexibility as they can have. So we provide a framework for them to work in with required courses, of course, that everybody has to take. But within that framework, there's an awful lot of wiggle room for students to do not necessarily what they want to do, but if they need to explore or want to work into certain areas or even cross over some areas, we allow that flexibility here. And that's, that's kind of a nice thing to have compared to other programs at other universities where it's a little more structured, a little more rigid, and this is what you do and that's it. Uh, we try to provide that flexibility for students as much as we can. So those are our five main areas to look at, and we could talk about those in a few minutes as well. We offer also offer several minors. So sometimes what ends up happening is that maybe a student 
wants to go ahead and go to Susquehanna University anyway, which is totally fine and awesome, but then they want to major in another department, we'd like it to major in ours because, you know, we're like really awesome. But just in case, we also offer seven, seven minors right now. And you'll notice that the list is a little bit different. We have a minor also in film studies in addition to some of the other majors that are offered I mentioned before. But we have a minor in film studies and we have a brand new minor starting up this year in professional sales and that's professional media sales. That's an interdisciplinary minor in conjunction with the business school upstairs in Applebaum Hall here. So we're really interested and excited about that starting off. Um, and one of the things that we try to do also, in addition to what I mentioned already, is that we try to keep an eye on the future as much as we can. So, so we're working on present issues and things in the media and communications, the whole ball of wax, but we always try to have an eye on the future as much as possible. And that's where the professional sales minor came from. Uh, there was this need here in the program and at the university to have that sort of thing. And we filled that niche. It's going to start and it's, it's generating a lot of interest and a lot of people are really interested in it. And uh, we think it's going to take off and do a pretty good job. All of our minors are good. All of our majors are good. I'm supposed to tell you this, but if you get any questions specifically again about any of them, just go ahead and put them in the chat. So we have plenty of options for students to engage in and let me get to the next slide here. This is where the real butter hits the bread, if you want to call it that metaphor, which is a terrible metaphor, but I apologize for that. But this is where the, the, this is where the action really happens. We require practicum for students, which is hands-on practice at our various student media outlets. We've got a campus radio station, a campus newspaper, uh, video facilities in the basement downstairs. That's what we call it. It's a nice place, but it's a really good studio and everything for video functions and everything. We have a chapter of the PRSSA, the Public Relations Student Society of America, as well as a chapter of the Association for Women in Sports Media. And students are encouraged and eventually required to work in these practicum areas. And the nice thing about this is there's a whole list of, of examples sitting there that students can get involved in, is that we want you to come in here and do this your first semester. So right now, we're not one of these programs that shows you a picture of a, a camera and a microphone and a textbook for two years and then says, okay, you're a junior now. Now you can actually play with the equipment. We have students who are involved in their first semester doing work for us. And this picture right here, um, this is Tom. He's a first semester student. He's started classes here, I don't know, a little over a month ago, seven weeks ago, basically. And he's on the air with the radio station. This is Mr. Goon. If you ever listen to the radio station online, and here, Mr. Goon, this is the guy. But that's what we try to do. We want to encourage people to do that. We want to have students be comfortable enough to do that. And on a side note real fast, as much as we encourage students to do these things, to get hands-on experience, to get the training that they need so they can get the jobs later on, we also encourage students to meet us halfway. Because if students kind of stay in their dorm room and wait for the world to show up, it's probably not gonna show up very soon. So it's a kind of a two way street. But the nice thing is, is that when a student does reach out and want to take the steps, we've got the opportunities for them to do that. And that's what we do. That's, that's kind of who we are. So that's in school. That's why you're here and everything. But we also need to talk about what happens also during school, but also after graduation. So internships, employment after graduation, graduate school that comes up. And this is just a small, small fraction. I mean, this is all I could fit into the slide, basically, of the places that students go either for internships or after graduation. And, and I like this slide, although I couldn't fit everything into it, because one of the things we need to keep in mind is that what I like to tell prospective students is that you can do anything with a communications degree, anything. So you can work at ESPN or Showtime or any place big like that if you wanted to in the field of media, but you'll notice there's a Department of Defense logo sitting there. We've got an alumnus who works in the Department of Defense. He has a communications degree. We've got another alumnus who graduated about 10 years ago and he just got promoted to captain of the Montgomery County, a captain in the Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Service. He's got a broadcasting degree. And the Farley Dickinson, Farley Dickinson, Farley Dickinson, I just get it mixed up. Um, student who graduated about five years ago, she was just promoted to the head coach of the women's softball team at Fairleigh Dickinson. 
She has a degree in advertising and public relations. So, I mean, the thing is we have our plans and that's great. And we wanna get our degrees and whatever we give then and get them in and that's great too. But then the nice thing is, is that this degree, this field, this area is so flexible that sure, you can get a degree in communications and you can pretty much do anything in it. And that's one of the really, really cool things about here specifically, but one of the great things about having a communications degree in general. And what we try to do is again, encourage students to go ahead and make those plans for graduate school or get that internship and go for that internship at ESPN. Because if that's what they want to do, we'll show them how to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and that's, that's, again, I, that's what it boils down to for me is the, is the chair. This is what we do. I mean, this is who we are. And again, the students and Dr. Hastings as well can go ahead and, and help me with this sort of thing and back me up on it when they tell you some of the things that they're involved with here in the department as well. Um, so don't worry. As far as I know, and Dr. Hastings helped me out here for a second, we still have like a 96% employment or grad school placement rate within six months after graduation. Uh, that's correct. The numbers aren't in yet for this year because we graduated a little later than usual yeah. because of COVID-19. Yeah. But okay. uh, for the past 10 years, we've been at 96%. Okay, thanks. Um, and one of the things, so, so we, people get things when they graduate, they don't just kind of drift out there. And also to kind of piggyback on this for one last, one last comment is that we've developed and built a network of alumni over the years. So again, one of the things about our program is that our alumni want to help students with internships or post-graduation employment or grad school applications or anything like that. And so what we try to do is again, keep, keep building those relationships up. We have plenty of alumni that come back for homecoming for alumni, other alumni events and everything because they like the place. They like what we did here. They like what they did here. And that's the important thing because the focus is on them, which kind of leads to the final or next to final slide because as you're, this all is about you and I'm not going to sing that SpongeBob song or anything like that, but it's all about you essentially. So hopefully after four years, what ends up happening is you're taking that long walk down Kurt's lane towards your graduation ceremony and everything's great. You've had a good time here. You've learned an awful lot of good stuff and you've got a lot of good prospects when you're done. That's what our department does. And real fast also, the department and the philosophy of the department is built on those three tenets of a Susquehanna University education, which is down there at the bottom. Achieve and lead and serve. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the overall arcing goal of the, of the university. And we reflect that in the courses that we offer, the teaching methods, the opportunities we provide for students. And uh, that's kind of what it's all about. So my next slide, was kind of intended for later on, but I mean, it will be intended for later on because that's pretty much what I have for right now. So if you do have any questions, please put them in the chat in the meantime for right now. And we'll also have a little bit of open ended sort of question and answer here, hopefully in the next half hour or so. But I wanna save some time, if I can bail out of this, let me go ahead and stop share. Um, I wanna bail out of this essentially, I'm not sharing anymore, right? You can't see my screen, okay. I use Teams normally, but that's the way it is. But I wanna provide some time for the other folks up here to tell you a little bit about what they do specifically, um, maybe what they appreciate about the program, what are some of the challenges with the program, good challenges essentially, and um, what their plans are or what they do. Anything like that, sky's the limit. And I would like to start off with my esteemed colleague, Dr. Hastings, to tell you a little bit more about what she does and how things go in the department. Dr. Hastings, the floor is yours. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, I'm so happy to be with you because it means that you might be someone I get to know next year. I was telling the folks earlier that I know Amanda, who's one of our panelists two years ago when she was a brand new student at Susquehanna and we had a class together. And relationships are really the foundation of our department. The idea is that you start out your first year in a class with a member of the department. The class is called Perspectives, and it is providing that transition from uh, how you study and succeed in high school to how to be successful in college. And then we try to see that you have at least two classes in the department your first semester. 
So it's not like a kind of school where you do all of those general education requirements first and you don't even get to do any major activities until you're a junior. We get you started your first semester. Um, if you know what area you're interested in coming in with, advertising and public relations or sports media or broadcasting, whatever it is, then we'll put you in the introductory level course in that field. It sometimes turns out that people say, whoa, that's not what I thought it was going to be. And they want to do one of our other majors. So we want you to find that stuff out right away. Uh, as the slides show you at uh, the graduation picture, we get people through in four years if you do your job. If you do your job and you go to your classes and you pass them, we make sure that you finish this up in four years. If you take a semester off or you uh, change majors six times, mm, <laughs> I can't guarantee the four years then. But you do your job, we do our job. I, I see there's a question already. Um, the question is about from Benjamin, if I got my associate's degree, would I still be able to come to Susquehanna? Absolutely. So Susquehanna has these agreements with lots and lots of two-year programs. And that means that we look at the credits that you got there and we try to pair it up with what we offer here. And in fact, if you're thinking, I don't know if you've already if you're already on the path to the associates, Benjamin, but if you're thinking about two years somewhere, two years Susquehanna, we can talk to you about what courses to take in the other program so that you'll slide right in and finish in four years. Okay. So you finish in four years. Then something else that was alluded to is the model of the department. And that is the hub and spoke, like a wheel. So in the hub are the courses that everybody takes in the department. And these are things to get you on your feet right away, like Essentials of Digital Media, and a new class in Adobe Creative Suite, and a course on ethics and leadership, um, public speaking, these uh, courses that are similar for all of our majors. And then the spoke of the wheel would be your specialized classes in broadcasting or journalism or sports or whatever your major is. Um, I mentioned the first class you'll take it would be perspectives and you'll take two other classes your first semester in our department. Then the other courses you take, you help us find what you want to do right away to be successful. Some students want to learn college writing right away. Some want to do a minor or a double major. And so we schedule them classes in those areas. So we try to fill your needs to get you on the path where you can sample as much as you want. I always like to use the analogy of a buffet. So when you go to a buffet, which I know aren't open during COVID, but you've been to one. Uh, if, if you're a little questionable about, say, the um, vinegar chicken, you only take one piece of it in the buffet. And you, you go sit down and you taste it. Oh, I love that. Then you take more vinegar chicken, right? Well, that's what we want to do your first year is let you sample a lot of things at the buffet and decide what you're good at, what you like, so that you can have more of that for the rest of your four years. The last thing I wanted to get out there is that our, our largest class in our department is 25 students. Our normal classes are 16, 18 in, in that area. We know who you are. We know your names. I know what position Amanda plays on the basketball team. Uh, we know a lot about each other. Um, I've, I've gotten to know Rachel over the years. We just uh, try to build the relationship so that we can see you from your first day through the door to your day across the stage when you graduate. So I've done a lot of talking. I'd like to, do I get to choose who goes up next? Sure, why not? All right. <laughs> um, I'm going to nominate Bodhi because I just met him tonight and I want to get to know more about him. He's in broadcasting and I teach in journalism and I, and he's only a sophomore, so I haven't had him yet. Thank you, Dr. Hastings. 
Um, hello, my name is Bodhi Chalice. I'm a broadcasting major here, sophomore. So I am the newest of the bunch technically, um, but I've been very involved. And I think the reason for that is, um, and Dr. Stark talk, touched on this uh, earlier, um, right on my first semester, whenever I came in, um, I was involved tremendously with everything. Um, I got a shift at WQSU. Um, I took a lot of communication courses, um, my first and second semester. My second semester, I even scored a job with, his name is Professor Fultz in the TV studio. And I assisted him a lot with the cameras and all the equipment downstairs. Um, the communications department here is something I have honestly never felt before. It almost feels like its own little family where, you know, we all know each other as Dr. Hastings says. Um, everyone knows each other, knows about themselves. And it, it's, it's, very, it's very connected and, you know, it's a great place to be. Um, I'm involved with just a lot of the broadcasting things here. And yeah, it's a great program. So um, I don't know who wants to go next. Well, who you Amanda. Gonna, you get to pick. So, oh, you pick Amanda? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right, cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Amanda. Um, like Professor Hastings said before, I'm on the basketball team. I'm a junior in public relations and advertising um, major. And I'm also a president of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes organization on campus. Um, so like they mentioned before, there's a ton of ways to get involved. I personally chose to start a club here at Susquehanna, but what I've learned from my major and from advertising, public speaking, I can directly apply to starting a club on campus. And so the ways that we learn in class and how we can apply that to on campus and in real life is so extremely helpful. Um, one of the biggest reasons I came to Susquehanna was because they had my specific major. I wanted to go to a small school um, and most small schools only offer general communications and I really wanted to focus on public relations and advertising and so the fact that they offer that is so helpful and you don't really find that in many other schools. Um, again like they were saying the profession professor and student relationships are incredible. I swear the communications department I don't know if it's because they like talking to people but they are so easy to talk to. My advisor, every teacher I've had for my major, I, they're just so welcoming um, and I never have a problem. So just the family, like um, Bodhi was saying in the communications department is one of a kind for sure. So I definitely love what I'm studying and I'm excited to answer some of your guys' questions. So Rachel. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. Um, so my name is Rachel Cataldo. I am sadly a senior at Susquehanna. I am majoring in sports media and I also have a minor in Spanish studies. So I have a minor outside of the communications realm. Um, and what everyone has said so far is true. Um, my first year I was enrolled in my perspectives course and then also two other communications courses and I also got um, a job on the editorial board of the Quill my first semester. And this wasn't an opportunity I even knew existed. They actually had the sports editor reach out to me and say, hey, we really need an assistant. We liked your first few articles. Are you interested? And although I never envisioned myself writing for a newspaper and I had no experience whatsoever, I was eager. I jumped on board and I served on the editorial board for two years. Um, so really a lot of great opportunities and I would also just general advice to kind of take risks and push yourself outside of your comfort zone because great things come of that as a result. And also if you're really dead set on communications or you're just not sure, I would also say in no matter what major minor career you choose, you have to communicate with other people. Um, so this is why the communications major and minor. I obviously push it to students because I love it. Um, but you have to communicate no matter what you do. Um, so some other things I'm involved in, I also am involved in a lot of the um, video related things. So live sports broadcasts. We also do um, two weekly sports shows. Spotlight. It's more of a talk show style. So a student interviews a coach or an athlete and asks them questions about themselves and the team and the season so far. Um, I'm also an intern in the admission office and I get to manage their social media accounts and work with um, the director of 
communication for admission. Um, so that's really unique, not necessarily 100% related to sports, but just again, increasing those public speaking skills, networking, organization, um, and things like that. But one thing I wanted to touch upon was the fact that you'll get an academic advisor um, who is a member of the faculty your first year, and you're actually assigned an early advisor upon depositing to Susquehanna now. Um, that just changed within the last year or so. so. So that's really great because you'll get to know this person before you physically arrive on campus. Um, but Dr. Dave Kashuba is my faculty advisor. Um, so he's very involved in our department and he's someone I can go to, you know, when I was a first year, I was a little bit homesick. I didn't know what clubs to get involved in. I didn't know what classes to take. So I would ask him about those things. Now that I'm a senior, he shoots me internship opportunities. Um, has asked me to perform research with him, someone I can go in his office if the Yankees are doing really terrible or like if they blow somebody out 12 to three, like a couple weeks ago, we can talk about those sorts of things um, and just different things like that. So it's a professional relationship, but it's also really fun because now that I'm a senior, I've gotten to know him and also all of the communication faculty members very well. And he's also got to know me. Um, and just to touch on Dr. Hastings point of that they know you and they know more than just what you look like in your name. Dr. Kashuba actually remembered that my sister was supposed to get married over quarantine. And he emailed me like, oh my gosh, Rachel, what's the status of your sister's wedding? Like, is it still on? Like, is she okay? Like, what are her and her fiance thinking about doing? And I was just like, I don't even know if Dr. Kashuba ever met my sister. And he just like genuinely was like, are you okay? Is she okay? Like, how's it going? Um, so they really do remember things you might not even remember telling them because that's how much they care and that's how much they want to see you succeed, not only as a student or an aspiring communication professional, but just as a person as well, which is really nice. Hey, Rachel, I have a picture of you. Um, can I put it up on the screen and then you talk, you explain what you were doing in this picture? Sure, I'm interested She's to see. She's scared it. now. <laughs> um, let's see if I can find it. Trying to share my screen. No, oh, there we go. Okay, so, yes. Rachel, so, talk about what you're doing here. You're in Florida. Yeah, so one of the things I'm involved in that I didn't mention is the Association for Women in Sports Media. We have a chapter of that on campus. And it's a national organization. Um, a lot of the schools that have this group are big schools like Penn State, um, University of Michigan, Ohio State, University of Tennessee, and other places like that. And this is a very a very new club on campus. Um, it was formed and established my sophomore year, but um, I alluded to briefly my research project. So I also work at admission with Caitlin. So I know a lot of times we hear research and we think science, um, but I was actually lucky enough to do research with Dr. Kashuba, where we developed a code of ethics for sports journalists specifically to follow. Um, because some of you may or may not know that if you're a journalist, you have a code of ethics to follow. You can't just write anything you want about just anybody. Um, but something like this doesn't exist specifically in the sports industry. So that's why you see a lot of controversial articles about athletes or um, the NFL is corrupt and just other things like that. Um, so Dr. Kashub and I worked together all semester long. And we came up with roughly a 10 step plan or 10 different things that would be on this code of ethics. So I presented it to the Susquehanna community. We have um, a senior research day toward the end of the spring semester. Um, a lot of student presenters are seniors, but I was a sophomore at the time. So I presented then. And then I also, um, from the photos Dr. Hastings just shared, was able to um, present in a panel at the National Association for Women in Sports Media Con Convention um, two years ago in Tampa, Florida. So people that attended that were like myself and students, people that attended were like Dr. Stark and Dr. Hastings that were in the field. And then there were people working for ESPN and working for the NFL Network and the New York Times 
and the Washington Post also in attendance, professionals. Some just got into the industry. Some have been working for 20 years in the industry um, and they got to hear my message and I got to network with them. So really great networking opportunities, public speaking opportunities. Again, this is an opportunity I had no idea about. Dr. Kashuba actually was like, I have this great idea and I need a student to work on it with me. Like, I think you'd be great. Do you want to do it? Um, and I was just kind of like, yeah, sure. Why not? What do I have to lose? I think this could be a great learning experience. And it was. Um, and now he and I, you know, forward each other ridiculous news articles all the time. Like, oh my gosh, can you believe this? If they only would have followed step seven of the code of ethics <laughs> or like something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, really, really great opportunities that, again, I would never would have imagined myself doing research, but I was able to, and I got to present it at such a large scale too. Yeah. Well, thanks. Wow. That's, that's a lot of stuff. Y'all are making me cry here a little bit, all the neat things you're saying and doing and everything like that. It's really good. But I think I, and thanks everybody for bringing up all these points because, you know, rather than just hear me say it, it's nice to hear other people say it sometimes. And, and I think, I hope it's summing up for those of you out there listening to this, just basically what the department is pretty much all about. I mean, we prepare students for their future careers and future lives, but at the same time, yeah, it's not like we're pushing them into a room and locking the door behind them and saying, okay, you're on your own and that's it. Um, like Dr. Hastings says, it is a bit of a two-way street, you know, students have to have to kind of meet us there as long as they pass the classes and things like that, but we'll do whatever we can to help. Uh, networking opportunities, I know that was brought up also, so, so the AWSM, the awesome conference, <laughs> I just like saying that, but there's the awesome conference. I know Dr. Kashuba has taken some students to um, the Major League Baseball winter meetings for a couple of years as well. And we've also had awards ceremonies, not awards ceremonies, conferences for the radio station as well. And students go to these conferences to make presentations, to pick up awards for things that they've done in any of our student media outlets. And those are networking opportunities where they can kind of branch out. And that's probably one of the biggest names of the game, so to speak, these days. So we provide those opportunities for students to be able to do that as well. So there's funding for trips like this. And if there's not funding here, there's funding over there. So it's not a problem really to, I mean, we can't send everybody, of course, but it's not a problem to send students who are really excelling at this sort of thing to go to these professional opportunities at conferences or conventions to meet people and to branch out for whatever's next for them in their lives. Um, we try to do the whole package here as much as we can and hopefully it all works out all right. So I'm looking at the chat. It seems like there's more questions. Rachel, are you the moderator for the chat? I am. Dr. Hastings answered a question about journalism specifically and then also if someone were to major in journalism and digital content, what would um, some minors be that you suggest for that student? I'm going to defer to Dr. Hastings on this, but in my initial sort of surface view, pretty much anything. Yeah, most of it. I mean, I mean, Rachel even mentioned too that she's, you're doing a Spanish, um, Spanish language minor. Yeah. With mm -hmm. the sports in Spanish studies. Yep. In Spanish studies. So you get, again, there's that flexibility with a communications degree and a major. So if you want to major in journalism and digital content and minor in creative writing or minor in Spanish studies or anything like that, sure, it's going to be a good fit somewhere along the line. One of the things that, well, I think Rachel and I had this conversation. I'm not sure at one time it's foggy and everything, but but one of the things when it comes to say broadcasting and a broadcasting major or any major practically, sometimes it's nice to have that second language sitting there because you can interview and talk to people who don't speak English as a first language and do fine there. So, I mean, anything I would think would work. Um, political science is a good one also because it's journalism, <laughs> you know, go figure. So yeah, I would say just about anything in that regard. Are there any other questions? Um, I would also just add to that too, if you don't mind, Dr. Stark, two points. Um, one, I have a lot of friends that take a minor in um, some area of our Sigmund Wise School of Business here because it's such a great business school. And yeah. a lot of times, you know, um, folks want to do sports marketing. So they major or minor in sports media and then take a major or minor in marketing. 
or it could just also be something you're interested in. Like if you really enjoy drawing and taking art classes in high school now, yeah, it might not have a direct correlation to your communications major, but you can take that up as well. Um, really just depends or even maybe not declare a minor. You just want to take a drawing class. You can do that as well. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because that kind of, that, it helps sometimes. And, and, and for any prospective students that are interested, if you think about this as kind of like a pie, the entire college experience, you've got one piece of the pie being the classes that are required for your major, whatever they might be. And then you're going to have this group, another slice of the pie is going to be basically your core requirements, your gen ed type courses. Everybody's take a science course, everybody's to take a history course, that sort of thing. And then the third piece of the pie is only three pieces, but the third piece could be an area that's kind of just an open field sort of thing. So you could take a bunch of electives if you wanted to take a drawing course, you could double major, you could add a minor, add two minors something like that, which is kind of nice. And, and there is crossover in those classes as well. So as Dr. Hastings was mentioning, some of the core classes, the, that hub sort of um, wheel metaphor that every communication student has to take, some of those courses meet the qualifications and requirements of the central curriculum. So there might be a twofer in there. Uh, public speaking, for instance, counts for the oral intensive component of the central curriculum. So and everybody has to take public speaking, and that's just an example. So again, that's part of the role or part of the purpose in getting things done in four years as well, because again, if we keep things rolling just fine, you'll be all right. And Bodhi have, and Amanda, um, you've been kind of quiet, but I don't oh, know. Oh, sorry. Although, we do have ahead. two other questions. Um, so maybe Bodhi or Amanda, you wanted to take this one. Um, someone asks, is there anything they can do while they're still in high school to better prepare them for Susquehanna? Yeah, I I would say one major thing is being able to write. Like my high school prepared me so well in that aspect and especially for commu communications, writing is so essential. So just, I guess that would be my main thing because if you can write and you can structure an essay, like that is, you'd come here and you'd be way above everyone else compared to what I've seen in some of my classes. So definitely writing. I'm, uh, I'm gonna agree with that too. My high school did not prepare me for certain writings, um, but fortunately a lot of the professors here did actually help me out, including my perspectives class a lot. Um, and most freshmen take, um, I think, a writing and thinking course too. So that will also help a lot with that too. Um, the next question I will not answer because I did not study abroad yet, but another student asked, has anyone studied abroad and what courses do you take and why? And what was the experience like? I don't believe any of us have studied abroad yet. Um, oh. So I am a senior, as I mentioned, and I was scheduled to go on my um, GO trip. That's what we call it here. The glo That's short for Global Opportunities. Um, and obviously due to the pandemic and COVID-19, unfortunately, my program was canceled. So I will virtually be studying abroad this winter. I mean, I can speak upon some of my friends' experiences if that would be helpful. Um, but if not, feel free to say no. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, cause there's an introductory course, right? And then there's your go experience, then there's a post kind of reflection course that everybody's supposed to take. So, I mean, that's kind of the basic um, arrangement, if you will, in a perfect world, I guess, or a more perfect world, that's what people would be doing. Um, the department doesn't have a specific go program or exchange program or anything like that. Uh, you would have to go through the GO office to set that up and everything. And they give you more details and everything or admissions could because they, they know this better than me. I usually send people to the GO office because when they ask about it, it's like, oh, I know you gotta do this and that, but that's about it. But they, they know the specifics that you need to take care of. So, okay, what, by what date do you need your passport or any vaccinations or anything like that if you're going somewhere? And, and the thing is, we kind of keep that open-ended in the department also. A lot of students, a lot of students will go to Europe. Um, a lot of students have been going, well, more, not to say a lot, but more and more students have been going actually to Japan lately, the last couple of years, which if you talk about a media, you know, communications kind of, you know, empire or South Korea or places like that, then, then yeah, that kind of makes sense. And the students that have come back from, from the Japanese GO trip, they, they, boom, blows their minds, changes everything, their perspectives on everything when they compare American media with Japanese media. 
And so that's kind of the point of it, essentially. Um, if, you're, if you're not really leaning towards studying abroad or going abroad or going long for a long semester, there's also the Go Short program, which is usually over a winter break or for a few weeks in the summertime. And then there's also several domestic programs that keep you stateside as well. Um, but again, the office would know all the specifics about what's being offered at this time and what they're doing. Um, COVID did kind of throw a monkey wrench into, into that whole system essentially, but we'll, we'll get you, we'll get you through somehow or they will anyway, we'll figure something out. So any other, would you want to study abroad? Oh wait, that's, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the chat and I shouldn't be doing that. Any other questions popping up or if you need to, if you got a microphone, you want to throw them out there, that's fine too. If you don't want to chat or anything. Okay. I think they have to put up their hand and then we can allow them to speak. Oh man, that's a Zoom thing, isn't it? No, it's a webinar thing. Oh brother. All right. <laughs> See, even faculty can learn new things <laughs> from time to time uh, because I'm learning a lot these days myself. But if, raise your hand if you have any questions, I suppose, or feel free to jump them into the chat. Um, in the meantime, while these questions come up, Bodie, Amanda, Rachel, what do you all do outside of the department, say in the university? I know you briefly mentioned a couple of things, but are there any extracurricular activities that you work on or anything like that? And I'll let whoever wants to pick first go first. I can start if you want. Um, sure. So I am a member of our Greek community here. We have both social and service oriented sororities and fraternities. Um, so I'm heavily involved in Kappa Delta sorority. I serve on their executive board. I'm also part of the Be Positive Foundation on campus, which hosts our annual SU THON for pediatric cancer, very similar to Penn State's THON, if you all are familiar with that, just at a little smaller scale, of course. Um, and then I'm also an intern in the admission office, like I mentioned, in addition to those communication clubs as well. Amanda, how about you? <laughs> Sorry, okay, no, sounds good. <laughs> um, so like I mentioned before, I'm on the women's basketball team. So that takes up quite a bit of time. And then I also mentioned I'm the president of Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, is also a good bit of time, but I'm also a student ambassador on campus, which I didn't mention before. So I give tours. Um, that's a lot of public speaking. I help with events. So all the things I'm involved in require a lot of what I learned from my major and just communications in general. So a lot of involvement on campus that you can choose from, for sure. So, yeah. uh, so I am involved with WQSU. And I also am involved with Greek life. I am a member of Time with Delta. Um, I try to help out more or, you know, where I can. I'm a, I'm a newer member, so I can't help out um, as much as I want to sometimes. Um, I also have a job in the studio where I help out there. Um, I also am involved with a, uh, I think we call it the Riverhawk Recorder. It is a vlog sort of um, team here where we record videos for the YouTube channel. Um, we haven't had a lot of participation lately due to COVID since we were trying to start it up last spring, but um, that is one thing that we were trying to get um, underway. So, yeah. Far out. That's cool. So, see, I guess everybody gets outside. They get outside the building once in a while, too, so they go do other things. Uh, are there any questions? I turned off the chat because it was getting distracting for me. Anything new? There is up? one. Um, what's the schedule like for a communications major? Well, do you mean in the first year or? Well, I can go either way. So as, as Dr. Hastings mentioned, there's going to be some classes that every communications major will at least get into during their first year, if not the fall semester, then the spring semester for sure. But we do our best to get you in the fall semester to get you started straight up. Um, and then pretty much every semester when it comes to academic advising, which was briefly brought up also. So your academic advisor that you get assigned to um, will work with you for your, on your four-year degree plan, essentially. And average is going to be about 16 to 17, maybe 18 credits a semester. And we're on a four-credit system here. So that's usually four classes 
and then maybe a practicum credit for one credit or a two credit course just to get you up to 18. Um, we like students to do say 16 a semester because that pretty much keeps them on track for a four year graduation, a four year rate basically if we do the math. We need, uh, students need 126 total credits to graduate. But again, that's all part of that pie that I mentioned before with the three slices. So there's requirements that have to be met within there. So some students will graduate with more than 126 credits, but everyone has to have at least 126. So um, 126, right? No, 124. 124, my bad, I apologize. That's inflation. No, um, it's 124 credits. Hey, it's, I just wanna jump in there. Yeah. Um, Benjamin asked, what would the courses be like? We have a unique selling proposition in our department that's new, which is that if you are a communications major, you will never have to take a math course because we have a course in the department, um, digital media analytics, where you learn about Instagram, Google, Facebook, and Twitter analytics, and it counts for your math credit. So come to Susquehanna, we've got something better than math. Yeah, that helps, I've forgotten about that. Com 202, that's one of the newer courses that have been added to the curriculum. Um, and yeah, that's a good class. Uh, and usually people have to take the essentials course first just to kind of as a, as a prerequisite for it. Um, but yeah, you do that, you don't have, well, it's required for every comm student. So really there's no, I don't know, there's no pre-calculus or calculus class you have to take or anything like that. Sorry, Rachel. Sorry, Amanda, you probably took the math classes, didn't you? So, <laughs> well, there's a, you know, there's a, and some, and here's the thing about communications. Again, you can do anything with it, like I said. So I've got an advisee right now. She is doing communication studies as her major, but she's doing accounting as a minor. She started as an accounting major. And I thought, okay, that's an interesting combination. Why do you want to do this? And her answer literally was someone has to balance the books. Someone has to balance the books at radio stations. I just don't want to go full speed into accounting. So again, there's that flexibility that comes into play. So we do have some math people in the department, but yeah, not me, <laughs> but we're getting there. Um, I promise. So yeah, that is kind of a nice bonus for the most part. Anything else on the chat or I see a bubble, but. We only have about 10 minutes left and we haven't heard from everyone who's in the meeting and let's make sure that they get a chance to ask their questions or just say hi. Yeah. So there's Charlotte, Derek, and Jacob we haven't heard from. Ooh, you're being called out. I will offer it. Well, hold on. I won't offer this yet. Any questions or any thoughts or anything? Because, okay, I'll put it out there. Because usually what happens when we have these sorts of sessions, they're in person and, you know, there's a bunch of people in the room and there's more people to talk and everything like that. And there's usually a little bit of time afterwards to talk and, and whatever. I don't know what the situation is tonight with that, but that's okay. But then normally what happens is that when everybody leaves, about 10 or 15 minutes later, they're down the road, they're heading off campus or whatever. And, oh, I wanted to ask this and I forgot to ask it. Um, cause you might think, oh, I don't have anything to ask now, but then like I say, later on a question pops up. So I want to throw this out there right now. Let's go ahead and ask the questions now if you want to, but if you ever get any questions, you can feel free to contact me, Dr. Hastings, anybody else up here, the missions office, you name it, and we'll help you with whatever you need help with. Um, yep. There's our email addresses. I have the chat back on now. So, um, feel free to contact us anytime because that's what we're here for. I mean, we're not here just to kind of have a meeting or whatnot. We're here because we're interested in you because essentially you're interested in the program. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. And we want to do whatever we can to make sure that you know that we want you here and that we're going to do our best to help you get through and have a nice long walk down Kurtz Lane for graduation. And there's our admissions email right there. So I'm kind of letting you off the hook a little bit, but still ask questions if you need to, or unless anybody on our spectacular panel has any comments or anything they want to throw out there. Um, I've got my laundry list of things and I'm sure I hit it all, 
but I'm sure there's something out there that I probably missed at one point. That's usually what happens. Um, extracurricular activities, the core classes. See, that's the other thing too. If this was in person, we could show you the facilities and the studios and whatnot, but all that is online. And speaking of which, real fast, I'm gonna share my screen real quick because one last time, oh boy, how do I do this again? <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna go back to um, this real fast to share this with you. So again, our website or the university's website is up there. Let me go ahead and post it up there. The address, I don't know if you can see this, because at least it's blocking my window here, but let me go ahead and shrink this down. So what we're looking at essentially is, uh, hang on, this is an old man trying to do this stuff. So what we're looking at again, if you look for us online, ah, okay, that's kind of getting in the way. My menu bar is like in the way here. There we go. So Susquehanna Academics, Majors and Minors Communications, and you'll see everything listed here essentially with our five tracks that we have and more information about the faculty, specific information about the courses themselves. So the catalog descriptions will be up there as well. So feel free to look into that. And I'm, I'm sure the admissions office will show it to you, you know, or they have already or something like that if they, if, if, if they do. And you'll get more information and more specifics about what we do. This picture in here, this is basically our main Mac lab that's downstairs across from the studios. Uh, 20 computers set up essentially for video editing, but also audio editing and production as well. And yeah, the lighting is like that in there. It's kind of neat, It's kind of a good time. So check the website out for more information and more details too, that'll help and there's your link and it all works. Um, and I'm not sure. So, I mean, Caitlin, I mean, any, any uh, advice or thoughts or anything about this or? No, you all did a very thorough job. I think that was awesome. Um, if nobody does have any questions, I, I think for like five minutes, uh, until the hour, we, we can sort of end it here. Um, everybody who's who's um, joining us tonight, thank you so much for taking some time again um, out of your Thursday night to learn more about communications at Susquehanna. Uh, you have our contact information. So like Dr. Stark said, if a question pops up after tonight that you wish you would have asked or need to know more information about, we are all more than willing to um, uh, chat with you and, and answer those questions. Um, but yeah, thanks again much for joining any anybody have any last words of wisdom to send us off go to school here and be a communications major there it That's is what i'm leaving with <laughs> all right there sounds good all well, right yeah. well thanks everybody appreciate it yeah thank you everybody have a great rest of your night thank you all right thank you Bye. see you later